Recently, I've been having a lot of conversations with people about the Biden administration and how they're going about adjusting some of the different tax rates and capital gains rates and estate plan, uh, estate tax rates. And it's really started to come, well, it started to make me think a lot about what is the wealthy of the world doing and what is money supply look like from a global standpoint and really just here in the United States. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about M1 and M2 money supply and why the major increase that we have seen since March of this uh, 2020 and what it could mean for markets in the future and well, just inflation in general. So what is money supply? Well, it's classified in two ways, M1 and M2. M1 money supply is your checking and general savings accounts and the dollars that are in those accounts. M2 is more a combination of M1 money, so checking and savings, but also CDs or certificates of deposit, money market accounts, um, assets that are a little less liquid, but not including stocks or bonds or anything like that. So from February of 2020 to the end of the year of 2020, we saw a 24% increase in the M2 money supply. What does that mean? Well, what it means is they, people started putting more money into checking and savings accounts, money market accounts, and certificates of deposit, or CDs, as most of us know. We saw the expansion of the savings rate. We saw uh, people basically taking assets and saving instead of going out and spending, which has a direct effect on the GDP of the United States. Because we are a consumer-based nation, we grow because we consume, we quit consuming as much as we did the prior year because of COVID, because of fear, and we saw instead the growth and the amount of money increase in checking accounts and savings accounts and money market accounts and CDs. Why is this significant? From November 16th to November 30th of 2020, we saw a 25% increase in M1 money supply. So more money going into checking and savings accounts in a matter of roughly less than 15 days. That's enormous amount of money. 1.3 trillion of that is said to have come from certificates of deposit or CDs. Well, why would that be? One of the reasons could be because the Biden administration plans to get rid of what we know today as the capital gains tax. What is the capital gains tax? Well, most super wealthy people get their income from capital gains. And this is when you buy an asset, it grows, you hold it for more than 12 months, and you get a special tax uh, rate on it when you sell it anywhere from 15 to 20 percent. Now, if they, a super wealthy person took that same amount of income via a W-2 income or regular income, they would pay upwards of 40, 37 percent overall in taxes plus state taxes. During the Reagan administration, capital gains tax was basically put in place. And it was basically a way for the wealthy or the people who just held assets for more than 12 months to avoid paying long uh, short-term capital gains taxes, which is ordinary income tax rates. So if uh, you know who Warren Buffett is, he has uh, publicly said and been quoted to say that he pays less in taxes than his secretary does. This is a guy who makes billions of dollars a year. And the way he has done it is that he sells a portion of his assets, which is typically in Berkshire Hathaway, and because he's held them for 12 months or more, it is taxed at a capital gains rate uh, tax rate. So he doesn't pay ordinary income tax rates. And if you look at a lot of the wealthy people of the world, that is really how they get their income is via 
capital, long-term capital gains uh, uh, assets, so stocks, bonds, property, those kind of things. Well, the Biden administration wants to put an end to that. He wants to equalize uh, the taxation of of everybody, from the guy who is just getting by to the mega wealthy uh, individuals like Jeff Bezos at Amazon or Elon Musk or or even Warren Buffett. He wants them to pay uh, regular income tax rates on that income or on those assets when they sell them, no matter if they're long or short term uh, capital gains. This could be the reason why we've seen such a major expansion in growth and jump in the M1 and M2 money supply. Because in 2020, if you sold a long-term uh, or asset you've held for more than 12 months, you're paying long-term capital gains, which can range from 15 to 20%. Because the Biden administration is jeopard, potentially jeopardizing that, and the Georgia election could really, like, certify that jeopardy, you know, jeopardizing long uh, that long-term capital gains rate, we've seen a lot of potentially a lot of rich people selling assets that they had long-term capital gains uh, in them, and selling them in 2020 so they could have uh, pay the standard 15 to 20 percent capital gains long-term capital gains rate and instead of selling them in the 2021 under the Biden administration which would explain why we've seen an explosion in m2 money so m2 money supply because what they're doing is they're selling those assets and they're putting them in the checking and savings accounts and they're doing a wait and see for most people, this doesn't make a hill of beans, okay? They're going to pay ordinary income tax rates because that's how they get most of their income. They're not going to sell out their assets uh, anytime soon because they're saving for retirement. But what this could mean is that with all this ex money that is now in M1 and M2 uh, money supplies, so checking, savings, uh, money market accounts, those kind of things. When we see the Biden administration implement whatever changes they're going to make in uh, taxation, both on the long-term capital gains rates, capital or uh, income tax rates in general, along with estate plan or estate uh, taxes, we could see that money come back into the system in a major way. It's also an explanation of the increase in money supply. It is potentially also an explanation of why housing has boomed so much. And the reason it, if you think of it, if I buy a house, and most likely the Biden administration will not uh, tax um, the sale of a house that is you've held for say 12 months or more, uh, because it would drastically affect the majority of Americans who uh, own homes under $500,000. And when they sell it, they can take that money and go buy a new one and not really pay any taxes on this. By the way, I'm not a tax advisor. Go seek out your tax advisor for uh, particulars on this subject. But in general, we've seen the housing boom, not just because potentially because of the interest rates have been so darn cheap, but also because of the rich selling assets that they know would be taxed at ordinary income tax rates, potentially under the Biden administration, and instead they're buying assets that wouldn't be, like homes, like land, like uh, real estate in general. And so we have seen an explosion in the real estate market for potentially a combination of low interest rates, but also a adjustment, a tax strategy to move out of assets that could be taxed at ordinary income rates in the future under the Biden administration to assets that could most likely not be taxed at a uh, ordinary income tax rate. January 20th is when Biden and Harris will be um, 
put into office and we'll see a rotation unless something comes about and there's a change and um, the Trump administration stays in. I don't know. We won't know until January 20th, to be honest with you. But what I do know is there is a lot of money sitting on the sidelines and markets have done really well. And over the last 12 months, I mean, even 24 months, they've done incredibly well. S&P, the Dow, uh, NASDAQ, all have hit all-time highs. Now we're seeing a move in the commodity market because the U.S. dollar is falling. It's creating opportunities for potential buy low and sell high purchases in the coming 12 months. My thinking is potentially, is that once we see the Biden administration go into office and start to deploy their tax adjustments and the process of that going through the House and the Senate, and depending on where Georgia lands uh, on their election uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, the 5th, well, we could potentially see that money come back into the markets, stock market, bond market, currency market, derivatives markets, real estate market, and we could see a major expansion or growth in the United States over the next number of years. The one thing that's sort of a drawback about all of this is because the Federal Reserve has been printing money like crazy, our U.S. dollar has fallen in March from around a dollar three, a dollar five to eighty-nine cents on the dollar as of this afternoon on Monday, the fourth of January, two thousand twenty-one, which is a sign of inflation. Because your dollar can't buy as much, you are paying more for goods at the grocery store, uh, manufacturing, lumber prices, commodity prices. Go look at corn and copper. All through have gone through the roof because of that opposite correlation with uh, the U.S. dollar. Even the cryptocurrency world has exploded in the last 30 days. And if you look at the correlations between cryptocurrency and U.S. dollars, it is an opposite correlation of around a 90-day period of about 0 0.88, 0 0.89 uh, negative correlation. Very interesting. It's a good indicator of when should I buy certain assets and when I shouldn't buy assets. But... With so much money in the system and the devaluation of the U.S. dollar, you and I are starting to be challenged with inflation. And because with Yellen coming in as the Treasury, and I totally forgot who's going to be the head of the Fed, most likely, chances are you're going to see in a continuation of the expansion of money supply. You're going to see a continuation of money printing, and you're going to see a continuation of cost of goods going up and your dollars not buying as much. The common guy and gal in the United States is paying more. And it's a question of how do you position and what assets do you buy in the future that oppositely correlate to a devaluing U.S. dollar and profit and offset that inflation and inflation that you're uh, partaking in or being uh, beaten up with. So as you think about buying assets in the year, coming years, buy ass think about how it correlates to the U.S. dollar. Think about money supply, M1 and M2. You can just Google M1 and M2 money supply and learn more about it. But these are things that are truly affecting your overall financial wealth. And in the end, the more you know, the more powerful you are, and the more wealth you can create.